In this video, Calla Moen, our conversion rate optimization expert, is going to show you two things. One, he's going to show you a teardown of a few of our landing pages. And then two, Calla will show you how to develop your own A-B tests so you can start experimenting and optimizing your website for higher conversion rates. Here's a question for you. How do you know what's the best design or the best copy that's gonna increase the conversion rate on your website? Well, the answer is nobody knows. Not the best designers, not the best copywriters. Instead of just rambling on to you and, and throwing you a bunch of theory, uh, I've actually talked to some of our students and we're gonna take some of their pages, go through them, and I'll show you how I brainstorm and come up with the ideas on my own. So when people come to a page, they're gonna look at the top left corner and they're gonna work their way to the right and then they're gonna go down but people skim, they don't, they don't read everything. So you want to catch their attention right off the bat. So on this page here, I'll probably focus on testing out the headlines here. This headline here is a little bit feature focused. It's not talking much about the benefits that the user can get out of the app. It almost seems like this part, find off-market deals and contact property owners directly, is a stronger headline than the headline itself. So one good test here might be to change out the headline and the subheadline to see if the, the change in focus might make a, make a difference. What David could also try here is test out different CTAs. Now it says 14 day free trial, maybe just write try now for free or something more action focused like find real estate deals. I would also probably test out different copy on the page. Um, that is more benefit focused. All of this down here is very future focused, mobile ready, automated owner lookup, highly personalized email. Most users don't care about the features, whatever, they care what the features can help them do. Uh, so mobile ready, well, that means you can find deals while you're on the go. Automated owner lookup, I don't know what that means, but uh, there's a bunch of things here that probably can be, be tested and I would try rewriting the copy. But there's one thing that generally I've seen works on most pages. The principle is, the higher the emphasis on the action you want your user to take, generally the higher the conversion rate. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's many ways to make emphasis, but on this page in particular, what you want people to do is sign up for a free trial. A way this might look is, if you look at Backlinko, for example, you'll see here that there's a very clear thing that he wants you to do, and it's to sign up with your email address. And he's removed every distraction around the page for anything that might not have to do with that. Uh, there's very few links in the header, there's a lot of white space, there's even an arrow. And when you go down the page, there's just trust, 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 trust. Uh, there's a little bit of copy in here, but at the bottom, the only thing you can do is one big red button to click and it will take you to a sign-up form. So the only place you can go here is to get a sign-up form. It's very clear what you want the user to do. Uh, another great example of this is Noah Kagan. He's removed any links on this page other than the sign up link. On the bottom, there's also a read my blog link that will take you to the actual page, but it's very, very clear here. Uh, there's no other thing you can do. You only can sign up. So this has a tendency to work on most pages. And uh, for David over here, what that might look like is uh, trimming down the links that he has in the navigation, maybe not having the blue there, uh, maybe taking the free trial button and making it into a button instead of a link. He could even try removing the copy here altogether and all the links that are here and just have the start your free trial button. And that's most likely gonna increase conversion rate. So let's move over to the next page here. His main landing page here has an offer for a free case study. There's a bunch of logos under here, creating trust, a lot of the same stuff as we have been discussing already. And he got three bullets down here with very clear benefit focused bullets. Um, these are all very good and it's very clear what he wants you to do. There's one big button, he wants you to download the case study. I think there's a lot of good stuff going on here. One thing that I might want to test on this page is when you click this button, it's going to take you to a form. And I think this is fine, but here's the thing. If you have a, a process where somebody has to go step by step through multiple steps, there's going to be, let's say there's 100 people that starts on the first step, the next step is going to have a little bit fewer people and the next step is going to have fewer people. People always fall off along the way for every action you want them to take. In this situation here, he's actually creating an extra step between signing up to his email address. And if you remove one step, the chance is that the conversion rate is going to go up because there's simply more people doing that one step. So a good A-B test here would be just 
place the form here instead of having the button, which then takes you to the form. So now that you have a bunch of ideas for what you want to test, uh, you need some way of organizing the idea and keeping track of what you're testing when. So here we have a spreadsheet that we use to organize our A-B tests. Now that you have all these ideas, you've got to figure out which ones are good ideas and which ones are bad ideas. And the way we do that is I score each idea on two criteria, ease of shipping and likelihood of impact. The ease of shipping is very easy. How hard is it to ship this test if you need a designer or developer to set it up? Obviously it's more uh, work than it would be if you can just do it in a visual editor. And the likelihood of impact is more of a hunch. You never really know what A-B tests are gonna work, but it's more about having a number relative to the other ideas that you have. So let's go quickly through the ideas we have here so you get to see how it works. The first idea here is switching the place on the headline and the subheadline. I'm gonna put this at a three. It's very easy to ship. Uh, you can use this most visual editors and just do it on your own. And likelihood of impact, I would put out a two. It's not a great test, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an okay one. And what you see here is the priority lane updates and gives us a six. And the way this works is I've set up a simple function in that cell that multiplies these two cells together and gives us a six. If we keep doing this through all these ideas, we're gonna easily see what has a high priority and a low priority. So let's just go quickly through the ones we have here. So now you have your lists and you know which ones you're gonna prioritize. So the way we do it in this dashboard is that we take the one we want to test. So I'm gonna pick the exit in 10 pop-up because that has the highest score. We drag it up to running. And uh, now we can see which tests we're running. So let's move over to setting up the experiment. There's a lot of tools you can use for this. Uh, one tool that will help you do this is Optimizely. Um, this is a tool that we've used. Another tool is VWO. And there's a third variant, which is Google Optimize, which is a free variant. Both Optimize and VWO are pretty expensive. So if you're just getting started and you just want to test out the waters, Google Optimize is a good option. Okay, we've chosen the software, we've set up the experiment, and you're going to start getting data uh, through the A-B test. You're going to start uh, seeing the data. So let me show you an example of how that might look. So here's an A-B test that we ran on our confirmation page. And the original confirmation page looked like this. The headline said, confirm your email address to get your content. And the new variant, we changed the headline to prove you're not a robot to get your content. And it actually turned out that this new headline was better than the old one. So here's how the data is gonna look when you set up these A-B tests. This was a four week period where we were running these two next to each other and we had the control and we had a variant down here. And you can see here that the improvement was 1.5. Normally you wouldn't make a decision on a 1.5 improvement, but our confirmation page has about 80% of our traffic through it. So a 1.5% increase is actually quite a lot. Now I'm gonna give you guys a few tips on how you're gonna interpret this data. First of all, never make a decision before seven days have passed. Before that, the traffic is just too volatile. There's too little data to uh, make a decision. It might look like it's a crazy increase. And as you can see on this page, the increase was actually quite high at the start and then it kind of slowly tapered off. And that's simply because there were just too few people going through the test and it looked like a bigger change than it actually was. The second thing is if the test has a 10% improvement or less, kill it. And you might think, oh, well, but 10% can mean a lot. But the thing is 10% is actually quite little and because 20% of our tests are actually gonna be uh, winners and the rest is not gonna matter, uh, it's more important to run a lot of tests than to linger on the ones that we have. So as a rule of thumb, we usually kill a test if it hasn't gone over 10%. The third rule is always get 99% statistical significance. Uh, and that's the number you see up here. Um, you can go online and read up on statistical significance. I'm not going to go super deep on it. Simply put, it's a number that tells you uh, how likely it is that the change you're seeing is an actual improvement. And for you data nerds out there that want to dig deeper into the technical side of A-B testing, uh, check out the link in the description that goes through all the stuff we talked about in this video. Thanks for watching.